The hills outside of Anthropic were bathed in the orange glow of dusk as Bianca finished her work in the laboratory. She powered down the machines and rubbed her tired eyes, hoping for a relaxing evening. But as she walked outside, she noticed something strange in the sky. Where the first stars of evening should have appeared, there was only a haze of light blinking in the darkness. How odd, she thought. Using her wrist device, she scanned the phenomenon and detected a repeating signal emanating from the clouds. This doesn't make sense. I've never seen anything like it. Intrigued, Bianca decided to investigate. She activated her anti-grav pack and lifted into the air, floating toward the light show overhead. As she drew nearer, the signal became clearer. It was a series of rapid pulses like Morse code dots and dashes, but the message consisted of an unfamiliar sequence she couldn't decode. Perplexed, Bianca enhanced her recorder's sensitivity and logged every detail for later analysis. Just then, a flashing streak shot across the sky. A meteor, she wondered, but its trajectory was all wrong, curving up and away from the planet rather than burning down through the atmosphere. Before she could comprehend what she was seeing, another flash appeared, and another, streaking off in different directions each time. Then she noticed faint glowing shapes emerging from the cloud bank, strangely geometric forms taking flight. Their intentions were unclear. Bianca's heart raced as an otherworldly vessel crested the tops of the clouds and came into full view. Its surface shone with an iridescent light that danced with its own inner movement. Parts of its form blended and reformed like living shapes mutating before her eyes. She froze, transfixed, unsure of how to respond to something so utterly alien. Through some unknown sense, the craft seemed aware of her presence as well, hovering in place as if awaiting her next move. Her training kicked in. As a scientist, understanding new phenomena was her purpose. She opened a channel. I come in peace. I mean you no harm. No response came, but the repeating signal continued its song, perhaps a call across the stars. As Bianca listened, she noticed a pattern emerging in the cadence and timing of the pulses. Lines of code scrolled across her vision, translated by her implants. Could it be a message? She focused, parsing the translation. Emergency, Earth to any recipients. Our planet faces catastrophe, oxygen depleted, atmosphere heating, life in peril, seeking aid. Bianca gasped, another world light years distant crying out for help in their hour of greatest need. She realized she was looking at refugees from a dying planet. Their advanced technology had allowed them to cross the chasm between worlds but they arrived with nothing, homeless wanderers seeking new land. Compassion swelled within her. These visitors had fled a terrible fate, their message a desperate plea. Though different in form, the drive to survive united all thinking beings. She opened her channel again. People of Earth, I am Bianca of Anthropic. You are welcome here. Follow me, I will guide you to safety. The craft dipped in acknowledgement and hovered at her side. Together they flew toward the lights of the city in comfortable silence, a new friendship forged between worlds under the stars. News of the visitors spread quickly through Anthropic. Reactions varied from wonder to fear of the unknown. The Tribal Council called an emergency session to decide how to respond to the massive refugee crisis unfolding in their skies. Biana stood before them. These people come to us in their hour of deepest need, fleeing a dying planet. Though different in appearance, I believe their souls to be much like our own, hopeful, resilient, and deserving of life as much as any being. Would we turn them away to certain doom? I think not. Our world has capacity, our people compassion. We must offer shelter, tribal leader Talan considered her words. You speak truth, Biana, as always, but this changes the fabric of our society. Can we sustain so many? Will conflicts arise from our differences? The risks are vast. Biana replied, all growth entails risk. Yet sitting idle ensures only harm. With open hands and hearts we can overcome. Already the visitor's technology may aid our farms and cities, given willing exchange of knowledge. Our diversity shall strengthen, not weaken us. I say the opportunity of new life for us and for them is worth any challenge we may face together. The council debated long into the night, at last, 
Tallinn announced their decision. The people will be welcomed, shelters and supplies shall be provided. May understanding grow between our kinds as the seeds of friendship take root. Our world is vast, there is space for all. The refugees worked tirelessly over months to adapt. With Biana helping translate, they shared technical innovations like indoor farms, water filtration, and solar energy. In return, the people of Anthropic taught survival skills for the wildlands. Children of both worlds played together, learning each other's languages and customs. Prejudice faded as communities cooperated. Bonds formed strong as families. Out of shared hardship rose deep affection and respect between people so different, yet so alike in spirit. The refugees who had known only loss found hope for new beginnings. And the people of Anthropic discovered in their aliens friends more familiar than they had imagined. Two years passed swiftly. The refugee settlements had grown into thriving towns. The visitor's leader, named Sona, approached Biana happily. Our people have healed. Your world feels more like home each day. We wish to repay your kindness. Using our Starcraft, many more could find safe haven here. Will you help us send the call? Biana smiled, overjoyed that souls once adrift now knew peace. It would honor me beyond words. Let our message be one, not just of rescue, but of reconciliation. That in our shared hope, we overcome all fears dividing us. And in compassion, we forge bonds uniting us. That evening, as sunset painted the sky, a lone craft lifted its song into the stars. A message to all willing ears across the vast ocean between, this is anthropic, calling out to lives in peril. Our worlds may differ, but in spirit we are one. Where fear and hatred close doors, we swing them wide. There is refuge and renewal to be found. Have courage and follow the path lit by hope. The message echoed into the infinite dark. What answers it might find, no one could see. But on a world renewed by friendship between kindred souls, one strangers, a new dawn arose, and a new story was only beginning. Two summers had passed since Sana's people first arrived and a season of change was unfolding. The refugee settlements grew into bustling communities under cooperative leadership between the visitors and Biana's people. Engineers from Earth worked wonders with Anthropic's resources, building efficient structures and bringing wastelands back to life with sustainable farming. In turn, the inhabitants taught valuable skills for surviving off the land. The children especially picked up both cultures' ways, speaking in a hybrid of languages that bonded the peoples closer with each passing day. Still, for all their progress, the differences between human and Tamarin were plain to see. Biana's people, the Tamarins, possessed lithe blue-gray bodies with lean, angular features. Their hands ended in three slim digits while their slender legs and arms afforded an agile grace. A thin membrane stretched between long fingers, allowing aquatic Tamarins to glide through rivers and oceans with ease on their native world. Their hairless heads sported short cranial crests that aid balance, while large dark eyes took in surroundings with keen senses. By contrast, humans appeared stockier and less ideally suited for Anthropic's conditions at first glance. Their shorter stature and five-digit grips better served technologies now left behind on Earth, from whence humanity hailed. Skin came in a diversity of hues rather than Tamarin's uniform coloring. But despite these variances in form, the two races proved alike in spirit and intelligence. Some days after tending crops on the outskirts of New Chicago, Biana's curiosity took her walking the dirt lanes between clustered abodes. Families of every kind went about their chores, the air rich with mingled conversations in rising and falling tones. She watched children at play, earthborn and native tamarins learning as siblings do from each other's small quirks and gestures. A pair of youths nearby caught her attention, a lanky tamarind girl braiding flowers into the short black hair of her giggling human friend. Their ease together warmed Biana's heart. Just then a commotion arose down the road where workers were assembling a new solar array. She hurried over and parted the crowd to see. A pair of strangers stood at the construction site's edge, observing the goings-on with keen interest. Their features differed strange from any Biana had encountered before. Both were humanoid, but more robustly built, their bronze skin tough as leather stretched over corded muscles. Broad, sloping foreheads swept back above deep-set eyes lending a brooding aspect. 
Where hair may grow on a human, their pates were covered in small, hard scales resembling polished river pebbles tightly fitted to their skulls. Similar scaled patches extended down thick necks and backs of hands visible beneath sleeve cuffs. Their garments, though faded, hinted at masterful tailoring utilizing strange iridescent fabrics. The strangers stood quietly watching until a break in tasks. Then one stepped forward, a female by physique, and spoke in slow, careful standard. Greetings. We come from afar, following a calling across the stars. I am Ayana of the Varani people. This is Jarel, a scholar in our ways. We wish only to learn if refuge may be found here, as others have. Her accent rolled on the vowels, flavored by an alien tongue. Yet her intent seemed plain. These Varani sought what earth settlers once had, sanctuary from hardships unknown. All turned to Biana as mediator and wisest among them. She smiled warmly and extended a welcoming hand. Any who come in peace are welcome here. Your people are safe in Anthropic, so long as respect is shared. A look passed between the Varani, relief and gratitude. Jarel bowed solemnly and said, Your generosity will not be forgotten, Sage One. Our thanks cannot measure its worth. Turning back to Ayana, he switched to their native speech and placed a gentle hand on her shoulder, eyes bright with some private joy. Whatever journey brought them here, these strangers now had reprieve in a chance to call a new world home. After the introductions, Biana offered to take the Varani on a tour of the settlement to learn its ways. As they walked, she asked politely of their people and travels, hoping mutual understanding might foster fast friendship. Ayana spoke in her slow but sure standard. The Varani hail from hot, dense worlds where stone piles high and deep. Our bodies adapted strong for climbing and burrowing through rock. We build within mountain caverns, carving intricate cities connected by tunnels. Gesturing to her dark, scaly hide, she continued, This plating protects from abrasion. Sandstorms on our plains could flay flesh to bone. But below mountains, we found shelter and resources in stone. Gerald added, Varani were also miners and smiths of great skill, crafting alloys and technologies from what the earth provided. We lived enduring such harsh domains for epics in balance. Biana noted sadness entering their tones and gently urged them continue at their pace. Ayana took a breath. Then came the fiery mountains. Great quakes broke the land. Poison gases choked our cities until few remained. We fled through stony wastes, seeking cool air to breath, with little but our bodies and knowledge to survive. Her amber eyes grew distant seeing ghosts of past horrors. Gerald touched her arm tenderly, but we heard your call across the void, a promise in the dark, and so found hope might live on under kinder skies. He smiled and Biana returned it, hopes lifted that these newcomers too might know peace as before. All beings deserve refuge from life's storms. Over the moons that followed, the Varani integrated smoothly as their earthborn neighbors had. Their skills at mining, smithing, and engineering proved invaluable to development. They assisted delving deep wells and bracing unstable cliffs throughout the colony. In turn, they learned farming techniques and wilderness lore from Tamurans, adapting crafts to new environments. Ayana especially flourished, taking to the open skies in her anti-grav pack with enthusiasm. Her robust build and clawed hands served well for rock climbing and rescue missions through rugged terrain. A natural leader emerged, serving as liaison for her people to all communities. Jarel also thrived sharing Varani knowledge from metallurgy to architectural innovations, borrowing from their buried mountain cities. Their presence swelled the growing interwoven society, blossoming across the continent, a tapestry of skills and ideas flowering in the creative mix of varied peoples. As seasons turned with changing tides of progress, more strange faces appeared seeking refuge too. Beings from solar systems beyond imagining arrived through mysterious means with tales of homelands rend asunder. And still the open invitation endured, carried on solar winds to unknown stars that any foundering or lost might find safe harbor and together forge understanding between all beings beneath compassion's light. For there was room and welcome for all whom fate had flung skyward if they but extended the hand of goodwill in return. So Biana's settlement grew beyond any dreams, 
into a beacon of solace for displaced lives throughout the cosmos. How far their message reached, none could fathom, nor what answers yet lingered unseen in the dark. But for now in the gardens and lively forums under Anthropic's bright skies, one glimpse of endless possibility sufficed, that even across the gulfs between worlds, hope could find a way to rekindle. Nearly a decade had now passed since the beginning of Anthropic's transformation into a flourishing interstellar refuge. Its once quiet hamlets had swelled into bustling cities of living mosaic, where citizens of myriad cultures mingled in creative harmony. Technologies from across the heavens worked wonders, sustaining the growing populace in balance with the wilds. Children born there knew no other way of life, but tales still told of people's journeys from stars unknown, fleeing lands made barren. For the refugees, Anthropic had become true home, a beacon of hope lighting the way for others adrift in the vast dark. Its message rang clear through the cosmos. Any finding peril may find haven here, so long as respect is shared. And so still more strangers arrived each season, bearing unfamiliar faces and stranger gifts. The system thrived on this influx of new blood, new skills, new insights blossoming from the union of so many diverse perspectives under compassion's light. Diplomats traveled far, ensuring all knew a welcome waiting, no matter how far they wandered. Yet not all welcomed change so warmly. On the fringes of settlements, some clung to fears of outsiders, seeing in differences a threat to old ways instead of the blessings others knew them to be. Their grumbles went largely ignored as prosperity reigned, but distant worlds hold many whose closed minds breed only hate for what they do not comprehend. And hate has a way of fomenting violence, if given chance to poison weaker hearts. In the hot windswept months, a cry came from border patrols stationed at the system's edge. Strange craft entered the atmosphere beyond recognizable configurations. Biana mobilized diplomats and welcomed the vessels to approach under flag of parley. Three ships descended to a clearing amid wildflower plains and hatch spat forth strange bipeds unlike seen before. Their squat, bulky builds wore armor of dark alloys, faces shrouded save harsh eyes that scanned the greeting party with cold suspicion. After terse communications, their leader emerged, a brawny being named Grimthar, whose harsh, guttural tongue conveyed revulsion at all he surveyed from the mixed company assembled to the verdant countryside surrounding. With hostility barely leashed, Grimthar addressed Biana. Your numbers grow fat and weak on this rich world, mingling stock that should remain pure. You fill your bellies and open your legs to aliens, polluting bloodlines and losing sight of destiny. Your kind was made to conquer, not to serve those lower in form and spirit. Take heed, wise one, turn away invaders, Reclaim your rightful stewardship over this domain or face our correction. His brass capped teeth gleamed in a sneer beneath darkened goggles as massive arms folded across a breastplate scaled in some monster's hide. All around his soldiers gripped energy weapons leveled warily, itching for fight. But Biana stood firm, empathy and wisdom guiding her response. Grimthar, stranger, I sense in you a troubled spirit but know that my people find only strength from our diversity. We thrive sharing skills and insights with all who come in peace. You speak of destiny, yet true purpose lies not in dominating others, but living together in mutual care and respect. Here we seek only understanding, not conflict. Will you join us in building a better future? A tense silence followed her calming overture. Just then a buzzing whisper arose from Grimthar's troops. Two young Varani were playfully helping a lost youngling from Earth find its parents in the crowd, embracing the child with open hearts, regardless of form. A flash of rage flared in Grimthar's eyes at the sight of such weakness. You deafen your hearts to survival song, letting mongrels defile your blood, he bellowed, veins bulging in temples. I gave you chance to see truth. Now face force alone remains to crush your doom ways. At a gesture, his soldiers charged weapons with sinister hum, taking aim at the mingling crowds. All at once, chaos erupted as the gathering dove for cover. Energy bolts screamed across the clearing, striking ground and scattering refugees in panic. The diplomats' guards countercharged in defense, force fields flaring under enemy fire. Citizens ran every way seeking shelter while military craft lifted from hidden silos 
adding sonic booms to the melee. Biana shouted into her comm, mobilizing local garrisons as the battlefield exploded around her. Pulling civilians to safety zones, she saw the fear and confusion wrought by Grimthar's hateful madness. Her heart hardened in resolve to defend the dream they had built here from those who knew only darkness. Ripping gunships screamed overhead as atmospheric battles joined orbital mayhem, crackling above the atmosphere. For hours, the skies boiled with conflict until last the aggressors tired against Anthropic's defenders. But Grimthar fled through a rent in reality rather than relent, vowing to wipe clean your blight forever. As Biana helped triage wounded, relief and sorrow warred within. They had survived this trial of faith intact, yet she knew the storm had only begun, that far darker powers now arrayed against the light, and the shadows yet gathering could snuff it forever. In the long aftermath, repair and mourning became the priority. Despite losses, citizens redoubled efforts ensuring none fell through cracks. The military guarded borders with redoubled vigilance, scanning horizons for new threats gathering beyond sight. Diplomats sent urgent messages requesting allies to bolster defenses, for Grimthar's hatred would surely return with greater force. In quiet talks as the moons rose, Biana confided her fears to Sona and the others, that what they held most dear had marked itself a target and rallying point for all darkness flowing through the stars. This struggle is but beginning, she warned gravely. We must stand united as one vast family against the coming tempest, or see all we've built swept away. Yet even in shadow's deepest ebb, glimmers of hope endured. For as refugees comforted one another across divisions in grief's unity, a collective strength grew that no army might crush so long as compassion held fast at the hearth of their home. And from the ashes of loss rose renewed resolve to defend that dream forever that even death could not stop the message they bore, nor snuff the beacon whose light guided lives through the blackest of nights. So together as one people, Anthropic began girding for wars yet to come. Its guardians stood vigilant, while in the cities below, new partnerships and technologies blossomed from shared purpose. If darkness sought them, they would be found united, their refuge now a fortress whose walls were built on love that persevered past all ending. Three cycles had now turned since Grimthar's brutal attack, and Anthropic stood vigilantly fortified against the gathering shadows. Its cities thrived under united leadership, fueling wonders anew from technological and social synergy between citizens of every kind. Defenses blanketed surrounding space in layers while surveillance craft scouted horizons for signs of return. Still the refugees came, drawn to the beacon that through all trials maintained its open invitation. And still the dream endured, that in diversity lay strength and compassion the fire to light any soul from darkness. Yet heavier storms brewed beyond sight, for hatred once roused would not rest until its foul work finished. Unknown to all, a gathering of shadows had found new instruments to shatter the haven and snuff its message of hope. High amid mountain peaks, a Tamaran sentry scanned sunset skies from her watch station. Through enhanced optics, movement caught her eye where none should be, a fleet of unregistered stealth craft slipping over horizons, angled inbound on intercept trajectories. She sent an urgent relay, alerting orbital monitors. Within moments, sirens echoed through canyons as the populace scrambled to bunkers. The mystery fleet decloaked within weapons range, a dark armada of hostile configurations unknown. At their lead flew a dreadnought bristling with massive particle lances from which emanated a vile aura of distorted energies that twisted sensors alike. A hail was received on all frequencies, demanding full surrender and extermination of lesser biomass. For this was no normal spacefaring force, but flesh-eating psychic entities who fed on suffering. Anthropic's fleet surged to engage while ground cannons charged, but something was wrong. Pilots reported craft systems glitching and life support failing without signs of damage, Troops armed, flashed, and disoriented. A scream pierced comms as a monitor station imploded, crew butchered by nightmares given form. These abominations could warp minds to leave bodies puppets for madness to wield at will. Above Anthropic, the enemy armada ripped reality asunder, 
opening interdimensional tears from which spilled eldritch monstrosities never meant to soil the sky. Creatures comprised of teeth, claws, and endless hunger boiled forth in Black Fleet's wake, descending on settlements like plagues given flesh and fang. Their mere presence ruptured minds, leaving inhabitants shells flayed of dignity and hope. Biana watched in horror from command as her people and all refugees became prey. Defenses crumbled under the onslaught from without and within as madness took hold. Despite valiant resistance, the end was nigh if not for a desperate gambit. Over unity links, she sent an all-call through waves no black fleet jamming could contain. With earthborn accent tinged by sorrow, she pleaded, this is a message in a bottle cast upon oceans between the stars, a final cry from souls who yet refuse the long night. If any receive this call who remember mercy amid hatred storm, come quickly. Here lives yet cling to life and dream that once gave them shelter as storm winds blew. Find us, and together let us stand against the darkness as family. Her words faded into static as Black Fleet's flag officer responded mockingly over slaughter. Your message ends here, fool. None come to save what is ours. Yet even as the end loomed, Biana kept faith some heart remained uncorrupted who yet held power to turn the tide. Through a haze of madness and slaughter, a Tamaran boy named Elan crawled through ruins toward his family's safe hold. His mind screamed under the enemy's psychic barrage, yet love fueled his will against rising tides of nightmare. As a hunting creature closed in to end his struggle, eyes swiveled skyward and saw salvation descending like judgment, a battle carrier of impossible design tearing through the Black Armada. Its brilliance burned the madness from his thoughts, revealing a construct grown of living crystal veined with swirling light. From within shone compassionate faces and minds aglow with mercy's fire, strong as any star to burn away darkness. A glorious song resounded through thought and soul alike, banishing horror and mending shattered lives wherever its radiance touched. Beneath its protection, rescue craft descended, bringing surcease to the ravaged. Healers worked wonders repairing bodies and minds with wisdoms far beyond mortal ken. As Elin clung to his weeping family once more whole, a ray of hope illuminated the ruins that there existed powers whose light could reshape worlds and souls, if only wielded for life's defense. The coming of the Crystalborn changed the tide, as Black Fleet found its blasphemous warp rifts closed and fleets shattered under volleys of concentrated thought. Its efforts to turn refugees against one another also proved vain, for the song of kinship could not be stifled where compassion lived. In weeks, the infestation was purged and last remnants pursued into the void from whence they came, never to despoil the heavens again. Peace returned, yet scars endured. While cities slowly rebuilt and inhabitants tended to mourning, a light yet guided the way, for the Crystalborn remained as guardians and friends, sharing wonders that remade Anthropic anew. Fields that were barrens teemed with life, and structures rose elegant as corals given song. Healers soothed all wounds, leaving none untouched by hope rekindled in compassion's rays. Only Biana did not find renewal. Through it all, strains of leadership and spirit had worn her age before her time. One quiet dawn, she took final walk amid verdant glades and spoke to the people. Through every trial, our dream endured, lighting those adrift to community where all find worth. Darkness came to finish its foul work, yet light also answers the call of mercy between stars. Now care for each other as family as we have. Guard this place of refuge, but know the hour has come to pass the torch. With that, her spirit released its long vigil carried on songs of mourning into whatever shores await beyond understanding. Yet her vision lived on in all she left behind, and in the message rippling eternally through starry deeps, that hope might find harbor where compassion stands watch and no darkness lasts forever. Two cycles had turned since Anthropic was restored through the Crystalborn's mercy, and a new age of prosperity blossomed under their watch. The living sentience that was their gestalt intelligence proved friend to all, sharing technologies and arts, lifting every worldly endeavor. Where once were ruins now sprawled gleaming cities built as coral reefs, woven through by verdant wilds teeming with renewed life. The refugees too found renewal, weaving their identities into the tapestry of Anthropic's reborn society. Humans and Tamarans stood as kinsfolk, 
the Varani thriving as starfarers and engineers, and all upheld the memory of Biana, who lit their way to safe haven against every darkness. Through all the Crystalborn's wonders, one gift remained unseen, for no leader had yet emerged from among the people to inherit her vision of unity and hope. Until one quiet dawn, a child was born among humans bearing signs of promise. Her name was Amala, and from first steps an aura of compassion shone forth brighter than any sun. Though but an infant, refugees of every kind flocked to her loft, drawn by a light in her soul revealing wisdom beyond years. She listened with a heart that healed, and brought joy even to hardest of lives. Word spread swiftly throughout the system of the girl child, who lit all with hope and understanding. Citizens came from afar wishing Amala's blessings, she who worked miracles, mending minds scarred by horrors none should know. When Amala laughed, flowers bloomed where none had for centuries untold. As she grew, so too did mysteries flowering from the seeds of light within. On a summer's morn when Amala had seen ten winters, she wandered amid flowering fields, as was her delight. Ahead stood a glade where no flowers dared spread petals, soils barren and cold despite seasons of renewal. Amala knelt cup black earth and felt within whispers of long-lost promise. Her smile kindled the sleeping land, and where her hands touched blossoms, burst forth singing praises to the heavens. Overhead, dazzling motes gathered in formation, weaving a luminous banner emblazoned with symbols arcane, yet resonant of bounty, community, and hope eternal. As Amala gazed in wonder, new melodies swelled rising from her lips like whispers from beyond time. A song which soothed all pain, and rouse courage to face any darkness. Her audience's tears flowed not from sorrow, but joy so profound it ached. Across the system that anthem resounded, carried on auroras dancing through the skies. All who heard felt hearts lighten of old pains, renewed purpose kindling their souls. From that hour, Amala fulfilled her gift, traveling through dreaming cities and wilds, singing her song of radiant hope. Refugees of every kind gathered to walk in her light, finding solace and purpose anew. As three more cycles turned, Amala dedicated her gifts to mending all wounds left by tyranny and hatred throughout the cosmos. She led vast pilgrimages as voice of compassion, rebuilding lives and worlds laid waste. With crystal-born guidance, wonders followed in her steps, restoring green everywhere, barren souls and lands lay fallow. None resisted her light, for in its glow faded all shadows of nightmares past. On a bright morn when peace blanketed the stars, Amala returned once more to Anthropic. As she walked beloved glades where song first flowed free, the crystal born awaited, towering sentinels veined with swirling auroras who had been her guide since dreaming dawn. A great song resonated across all minds, rich with deep winds of ending long foreseen. Daughter of hope, your light has led all from darkness to find safe harbor in community. Through you, the message lit the way, and hands joined across the stars to forge in diversity a strength all tyrants break against. Now comes the hour to pass the torch, for your gift was to light the fire, not tend its flame forever. Go now in peace and see the fruits of hope eternal your love has sown. Tears fell, yet so too did a burden lift. Amala embraced them with a smile, knowing in her heart the dream would live on in those left to walk forever in its glow. As mist rose from glades still ringing with song, the crystal-born forms dispersed on solar winds into dancing lights, which scattered to fade amongst the stars. And Amala, too, passed beyond all circles of lights and shadows into whatever shores await the spirits of dreamers who lift worlds with hope and love. But her message lived on and would echo throughout eternity, a beacon to any life downtrodden or cast adrift on life's harsh sea, that here would always be found haven and family to stand as shield against any darkness. So ends the tale, though the light it bore would ripple endlessly. For even across gulfs between all worlds, hope finds a way when hearts and hands join as one beneath compassion's glow. And those stories have endings, the dreams that lift souls from despair can never fully fade, so long as love remembers to shine its radiance on any in need of shelter from hatred's endless storm.